I look a little wild right now. It came to the point that the conviction just became too great. Let's just put this back for a second because the hair is um, doing its own thing today. The Jesus glow is true. It's a real thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> Welcome back to Time with Tally, or welcome to Time with Tally. If you've never been on my channel before, my name is Tally, and I do a little bit of lifestyle, fitness, and you know, like beauty content, just a teeny bit. Welcome if you've never been here before. I'm so excited to have you. Today I'm gonna just do a really quick just life update and sit down and talk with you guys because I haven't been able to do that in a bit. So let's get ready for the gym and we're gonna talk a little bit. I do want to begin by saying that we have a bunch of new people that have joined the family and I'm so excited to have you here. Yes, I seem a little corny in my excitement, but uh, that's actually me in real life. Yeah. <laughs> I do want to begin by saying as well that whatever I say in this video is not me pushing anyone. I just am giving you guys an update on what's going on in my life for those that care. Unfortunately, I know that talking about some of this stuff might make some people flee and maybe they don't want to hear about it. I respect your feelings. I'm not pushing anything onto anybody. I am just talking about my life. <laughs> A lot of people know that when I started this YouTube channel, I just wanted to create a community, you know, find my tribe, and whoever stays with me stays, and whoever doesn't, I wish them blessings along the way, and all the love and good things that can come to them. Without further ado, let's get into the update. So as many of you know, I started a new job in the hospital. I'm working currently as an emergency room nurse. Yes. I, I know, like I, I know what you're thinking. You're right. <laughs> one, I am crazy. Two, it is a lot. It's genuinely one of the most eye-opening experiences I probably have ever had. This job has come, even though I've only been in it for like a month now or so, it has definitely come with its trials and tribulations, I will say. And I've learned so much, like so much in just this short matter of time. So far, I will say that the people that I work with are so incredibly kind and nice. Like they genuinely, like if I have a question, none of them run away from me asking a question. It's one of those things. Honestly, I was very fearful of that I was not going to be able to encounter. I know I don't do a lot of nurse content because I'm trying to niche down just a little, but I'm a Christian gym rat nurse that also makes content. There's lots of stuff I could do, but you know, when you're trying to grow, I guess you're supposed to niche down. I don't know. Anyways, don't talk to me about it. I don't want to know. I already struggle as it is with my schedule to make content for y'all. I have no problem starting that content if I get enough people that actually want to see more nurse content. If you want that, just leave a comment below and let me know what you want to see. I'm there in the comments too. I'm seeing what y'all are saying. That in itself has been an amazing experience thus far. I'm very much looking forward to what's coming next. Now that we're shifting out of the career topic, your girl has officially started her cut. Yes, yes ma'am. I have officially started my cut season. I will probably be cutting for a few months. I don't think I'll make it this full six months, like when I was bulking. That, as of right now, I'm just saying six months. We're on day three, and I already feel like I see a difference. Maybe I'm a little crazy, that's fine. I don't mind being crazy. My training program, my workout program has obviously changed a little. I'm now in a 300 calorie deficit. I went from about 1850 calories to 1550 calories. I've been doing well the first three days, y'all. I'm very proud of myself, but I'm about to go to the gym now. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> For those that have been here since also I started going to my new gym, I know I was worried about like making new friends and whatnot. I have an update. I've been making gym friends at my new gym already and I'm so happy because the gym for me, it's like a second home. So making new friends has genuinely made me feel more at peace being there, more comfortable being there. And I feel kind of like included. <laughs> it's It's been super welcoming. They've been so sweet there. I see all kinds of people in there and they're all willing to help each other out. It's really, really nice. It's a, it's a great community in there. Relationship wise, Nothing. Sahara Desert. Yes. 
a few months ago, I downloaded a dating app just to see if I can like kind of like get back out there, get to talking to people again, because genuinely my dating life and actually just socializing life period has been very scarce and far few in between when it comes to like making new friends or even seeing my old friends. So the dating was a lot less likely to occur. So I figured, let me just hop on an app just to kind of like get practice in, you know, dip my toe in. That lasted, I think like four days. <laughs> because if you don't act right in like 72 hours see that's my problem sometimes the Lord is working with me when it comes to how I speak to men at times because sometimes when people try to play me I think I did it nicely but I also wasn't playing around I think I was firm but nice so now here is the topic that I think a lot of people probably clicked on. A little of my testimony. I was a young girl that was raised in a Pentecostal church. If you don't know a Pentecostal church, maybe you've encountered one. I know in my state we have quite a few of them, at least in my church's doctrines. They were very strict on how girls should, you know, pre present themselves. You could kind of pick us out from what we wore, which usually would be skirts. I was known in school as church lady. You would never catch me wearing pants because that was male wear. I wasn't allowed to wear makeup. I wasn't allowed to do my hair really. I wasn't allowed to get, you know, any piercings or earrings. Very much lack of expression from my point of view. So I had been in church up until my early teen years. And anything that I say right now is not to be meant or taken defensively. I'm just speaking from my experience because I'm going to tell you right now, no matter the people in my life that have hurt me or done grotesque, hateful things to me in the past, the church hurt and the church trauma did probably the biggest number on me. I'm going to not get emotional. I'm going to, no, we're not doing that. A lot of these false predications of what God was and how I saw the Christian people treat each other or treat me, it led to me, and I'm not just blaming the Christians, obviously I had my own, you know, part in it, of course. I fell into temptation with the world and wanted to experience the world. But a lot of that did have an influence in me kind of getting out of church, leaving church, leaving God. I would say from like my mid-teen years up until last month, <laughs> I didn't have a relationship with God. And anytime I would step back in into prayer with God in those years, I could say I had a relationship with God, but it was nowhere near a close relationship with God. I would just talk to God once in a while when things are going well or when they're going really bad. It was never a consistent relationship. I felt like the Lord was definitely convicting me for quite a while. To say that he waited for me is an understatement. Sometimes I can't even fathom like all the good that he's done for me and the fact that I behaved the way I did I stepped out on him the way I did and yet I felt like he received me with open arms I'm forever grateful why let me tell you something this is a really different video than what you guys are used to this is wild I don't do this online I've noticed that since coming back to Christ I cry a lot more I never used to be a crier what the heck Woo! I cry all the time <laughs> oh no my makeup's gonna be ruined here we go stop hold on let me get myself together anyways <laughs> I don't even know what I was gonna say Anyways, like I was saying, Christ had been convicting me for quite a while. He'd been talking to me in, you know, little messages, little signals throughout all these years. And I just kept running and I just kept avoiding his message or his word or his conviction to me. But as my mom says, she said something so beautiful that I literally am marked with for like the rest of my life. She told me that when people used to ask about me and where I was, and um, if I was ever coming to church or whatever it was, she used to tell them she's writing her testimony. Oh, stop it. That right there has also shown my mother's fate, but also the change that God has done in her. My mom used to be one of those very strict religious Christian women, but God has done a number with her and changed her heart 
and she couldn't be more exemplary now. I go to her about everything. We do Bible study together and we talk about the stories in the Bible now and it's, it's amazing because I also did have a point in my life where I was very rebellious towards her. I think there was a reason the enemy wanted me to stay far away from her because together we are a force to be reckoned with for sure. I also wanted to come on here and make this video just because I know I had mentioned in my previous video that things might be changing, but I also want to make it clear that no matter what my faith is now, I have never and will never be someone that sees themselves as someone better than others. And I know a lot of people meet Christians and they have encountered Christians that behave in that manner. I came from where I came from and I am who I am now because of God, but that doesn't change the heart that I have for people. And actually, if anything, it makes it better. I always used to say when I started this channel, you can ask any of my friends. Every time I pray, I pray to God that when people see my videos, they see my love for people in my videos. I will be keeping my videos, my previous videos that is, up on the channel. I think it's a great exhibit of a testimony for sure. And also I worked really hard, so they ain't going nowhere. I guess a few things I just want to leave you with is one, if you feel like you have that inkling or like that push from Christ to get to know him or come back home to him, don't be afraid to ask someone questions. If you're met with anger and hate and someone trying to instill fear in you, seek a second opinion. Maybe a third or a fourth is needed. I think the problem that we have a lot of times now is that a lot of people, although the truth is absolutely necessary to preach to people, there's a delivery about it. And there's a way in which that you speak to people to bring them to Christ. You bring them to Christ with love. I also want to forewarn that I am not perfect <laughs> in no way, shape or form. I've been asking God to help me with my cursing and with my day-to-day -day behavior in my life. Of course, I was not living the best, most Christ-like life either, but now my life has changed because the one who gave me it said so. I'm, what you guys are witnessing is a transition for sure. And I hope that you stick around, truly. I am so grateful for every single one of you that are here. And I, and like, this is not no act. This is genuinely just like how I am. It's genuinely how I feel. In just about six months since we've started this channel, we've already grown to almost 1,000 people. And if I can at least spread the word of what has happened in my life to at least one, then I'm okay with that. I felt like God literally was like, and you, I'm gonna take it from here. <laughs> And I have not been listening because I'm telling you right now that when you're called for something that's powerful and you're breaking generational curses, you have to preach a word that a lot of people will run from you and people think that you're crazy. It takes a lot and it will not be easy. And if anybody else is out there that relates to that, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I've noticed, and I don't know if it's because of, you know, how the world is right now, since I've given my life back to Christ and I'm back home now, the speed at which this transformation is happening and things are changing in my life is so fast. It feels literally like there's a rush. There's an expedited order on this blessing that's coming into my life or this transition that's coming into my life, this calling that has been placed on my life. Because although God doesn't need me, it's nice to know that he wants me to be a part of his army. And I feel like now I'm making up for lost time, you know? Oh, that was a lot. And that's just the tip of the iceberg of my testimony. So I just wanna say, and I'll leave you guys with this. If you're like me and you felt like you had to be ready to come to Christ or you had to be at a certain point in your life where you were no longer sinning or doing certain things for you to be able to come to Christ and feel that love from him. You're mistaken, my friend. I wasn't ready. I thought I was, but in reality, I wasn't. We're all sinners at the end of the day and none of us are perfect by any means. <laughs> I have shortcomings literally every day, <laughs> but I know a God that sent Jesus to the cross to die for me and washed me with his blood for my sins. So don't be afraid to ask any questions. I hope that I see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for spending time with me and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Bye!